Years of tension between Kyrie Irving and the Boston Celtics bubbled over Sunday night in Beantown, with a Celts fan facing a felony charge for throwing a water bottle at Irving following Brooklyn's Game 4 win. So how did we get here? Where did the animosity between Kyrie and the Celtics begin? And how has it been stoked over the years? Have a seat, try to hold on to your drinks, and take this in. Before we get into the beef between Kyrie and Boston, I'd like to remind everyone watching that since you've got no beef with us, you should be subscribed to our YouTube channel, smashing that like button, and telling your friends to do the same. All right, back to today's episode. When Irving landed in Boston following his trade demand from Cleveland back in 2017, Celtics fans thought they had found their new savior, and Irving's play on the court did little to dispel that notion. Though he missed 37 regular season games and an entire playoff run over his two years in Boston, Irving also averaged better than 24 points and 6 assists on 60% true shooting as a Celtic. Sandwiched between his two All-Star seasons as a Celtic, which also included an All-NBA second team campaign, Kyrie told Boston season seat holders that he planned on re-signing with the Celtics as a 2019 free agent. I shared it with some of my teammates as well as the organization and everyone else in Boston. You guys are having me back. I plan on re-signing next year. But the Celtics fell flat on their faces in 2018-19, and Irving took his talents to Brooklyn to join forces with Kevin Durant, leaving Celtics fans stranded at the altar. And Boston's been waiting since that 2019 summer to let Irving know how it feels about him. Between injuries, absences, a pandemic-related shutdown, and empty arenas, games three and four of this 2021 playoff series were the first games Irving played in front of a fan-filled TD Garden since the split. In home games against the Kyrie Les Nets in November of 2019 and March of 2020, Celtics fans alternated between where is Kyrie and Kyrie sucks chants without him even in the building, prompting this famous Irving Instagram novel response. Before a 2020 preseason game in an empty TD Garden, Irving saging the court became a headline story in Boston with many ignoring the fact Kyrie's mother has native roots and that smudging is a Lakota ritual. Sensing the vitriol that was to come once he was back in the building with fans, Irving said last week that he hoped the hate would be kept to basketball and not tainted by racist undertones. Those comments only seem to upset Celtics fans more, and general manager Danny Ainge, who also played for the Celtics in the 80s, claimed he's never heard player complaints of fan racism in all his years in Boston. But it's worth noting the history here. Marcus Smart, beloved Celtic today, acknowledged that he's heard racist remarks from Celtics fans to opposing players. Bill Russell stressed that he represented the Celtics franchise and his teammates, but not the city of Boston or Celtics fans, because of racist abuse he endured there. Russell even ensured his 1999 jersey retirement was held without fans in attendance because of that history. Through two games in Boston of this series, which the Nets and Celtics split to send the series back to Brooklyn with the Nets holding a 3-1 lead, Boston's reaction to Kyrie was predictably hostile. That kind of language directed at a player is never warranted, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary for a sports crowd, especially for a playoff crowd as Irving lit the Celtics up for 39 points in a Game 4 win. Then Game 4 ended, and as Kyrie walked off the court, a young clown in a Celtics jersey threw an empty water bottle at the Nets superstar, narrowly missing Irving's head. That fan has not only been banned for life from TD Garden, but was arrested and faces a charge of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. This all comes following a week that saw a Sixers fan dump popcorn on Russell Westbrook in Philly, a Knicks fan spit at Trey Young in Madison Square Garden, and Jazz fans verbally and racially abused Ja Morant's family in Utah. It's been that way in history in terms of entertainment, performers, and sports for a long period of time and just underlying racism and just treating people like they're in a human zoo. This being Kyrie and Celtics fans, of course, the story can't just end there. Celtics fans and media members spent their Sunday night noting that between Game 4's final buzzer and the water bottle toss, Irving went out of his way to stomp and or wipe his shoes on the Celtics logo at center court. This in and of itself has divided the sports world. On one hand, you've got Celtics fans and OGs like Kevin Garnett and Big Baby Davis clutching their pearls over the fact Kyrie disrespected Lucky the Leprechaun, one of the most beloved symbols in Boston. 
On the other hand, Kyrie had just dominated the Celtics in an emotional, hostile return to the Garden, got one last dig in at a franchise there's no love lost for, and it's a painted, lifeless mascot on a basketball court, as Kendrick Perkins seems to understand. You could also make the argument that if Celtics fans are this beside themselves over Kyrie stomping on the logo, then they should probably be upset the Celtics let him stomp on the team as a whole in his dominant Game 4 performance. Personally, I'm as competitive as they come, but if you kick my team's ass, you can moonwalk on the logo for all I care, because I'd want my team's players to do the same to yours. In any event, this is clearly not the last chapter in a long-running feud between the city of Boston and the outspoken NBA star who spurned them. So what do you think? Other than the obviously foolish and dangerous water bottle incident, did Celts fans cross a line in their treatment of Kyrie over the last couple years? Does logo stomping actually matter to you? And do you think there's any way to squash this beef? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.